You want sloppy shins? All right. Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Mezco Toys action figure review on the 112 Collective New York Toy Fair 2019 exclusive Blade. And man, I feel very lucky to have this pretty sweet looking packaging. You can feel the spot varnishing right here with the text that says Blade. You get the Mezco Toys Toy Fair exclusive sticker right there. And then on the side, you get this nice image of the Blade logo. I like that. Also, spot varnished on the back, we get a cool image of Blade. And then on this side, you get that logo again. On the top, it says 112 Collective Pose Play Display. Then on the bottom it says ages 18 and up and you get a warning label right over there so let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's Blade out of the packaging and man this figure looks freaking awesome. I love the design choice over here with this Toy Fair exclusive version. It looks like a mix of the movie version along with the comic version combined into one with their own creative take. I really like that a lot. As well as the ton of accessories that we get with this figure. So let's get a closer look at all of those and then we'll take a closer look at Blade. So we get the goodies that we're always used to seeing with our 112 Collective figures. You can see the base right here. Really nice silver. I really like that in the text. And you can see the pegs sticking up right over there. Or you could take that out and use the clamp right over here. And we get the 112 Collective Ziploc bag. So I guess because this was a free figure, Mezco went really cheap with the accessories. You can see we barely have anything that comes along with this figure. Okay, sarcasm done. Uh, we get three pairs of interchangeable hands. You can see we get an even pair of fisted hands, weapon holding hands, and then we have these long trigger finger holding hands. Uh, we have a shorter trigger finger right there on this side, but then a supporting hand on that side and then we get like a palm punch kind of thing going on right over there and then this one has a two fingers out and they get a flat judo chop hand and then this has a thumbs up uh, when you can hold a weapon uh, we get some cool weapons right over here this gun looks pretty cool kind of has that nerf gun design to it I don't know if it's based off of a real weapon let me know if you happen to know but yeah nice paint detail on it Mesco always does a great job on the weapons uh, you can switch out the magazine right over here if you want to so that's pretty cool we also get an effect piece which we've seen before several times. I love it. Looks great. See the bullet at the end. Is it a silver bullet? Probably. But you can see you can just put this in right over there and that is really cool. For this particular gun we do have storage on the right hip so you can go ahead and plug this into that right hip holster and if I do it carefully enough on camera I won't ruin anything and there that goes. So that is cool. All right now now that's in there. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, we also get this big old gun right over here. Again I don't know if this is based off of an actual weapon but you can see that we get the banana clip magazine right over there and you could take that out and you could switch it with this other one if you'd like. So again that's really cool that you could do that. So it is a magazine, right? It's not a clip, but it looks very cool. And you could also use that other explosion or that other firing effect. I think you can pull this. Oh, no, you cannot pull that back. Okay, I thought you could for a second. Uh, we also get two of these guys, which are really awesome. I can't remember the names of them, but I love that metallic red paint. That is very cool looking. You could fold this in right over here. So that's cool. And again, we get two of these. Uh, one thing to be wary of, though, is I did notice the tips of these kind of, I don't know, they, they, see on this one right here, it's very, very fine thing to see, but the edge right there kind of got scraped a little bit while putting it into the little holsters. And we get two holsters on the side of Blade's belt, so you can go ahead and slip this through right here, and you can see it booking out just a little bit right there. You can see how that paint came off. So that's a little irksome, and you can do the same thing on the other side, and just weave that right through right there. Then we have six stakes, which is really cool. I like that a lot. I love this metallic red paint that we're seeing on them. Looks fantastic. I'm very pleased with that. And they're all identical to each other. So you can see we have three right here and have three on the other side. And then you can go ahead and store these on the left hip of blade. I definitely want to be very careful doing that. So there you go. We also get this shotgun over here, which is really awesome. I really dig that. Nice pump shotgun. So that's cool. That moves forward and back. Nice weathering detail on it. You have the strap. I tend to loop this through uh, the side that he's holding it. I don't know if you're supposed to go across the other way, but you can just loop it through an arm and then have him hold it like that. I'll show off pictures. But yeah, I think this thing is pretty freaking cool. And we get this new blast effect right here, which I've never seen before. And you can just go ahead and pour it in right in there. That is really cool. I'm digging that quite a bit. Awesome shotgun blast right there. That is freaking awesome. Very, very pleased with that. Then, of course, we get Blade's Blade. So you get this holster piece right here, which is magnetized, and it'll just stick to the back of the figure right there. So that's pretty nifty. And it's a little bit weird having two swords for Blade. I'm used to him only really having one, but, you know, you could have two, I guess. Nice detailed red paint throughout on this. I'm really digging this sheath quite a bit. You get some glossy black paint right there. And then pulling this out, you can see we get a beautiful-looking sword. 
really dig that quite a bit and the edge is all red and everything. Very suiting for Blade. I really like that a lot. And then we get four pairs of red sunglasses and four pairs of regular black sunglasses. I don't think we needed so many different pairs, but yeah, you, you want to go ahead and add these onto the faces of the figure. And yeah, I like all four of these head sculpts. So these are the two uh, more Wesley Snipes looking head sculpts. You know, neither exactly Wesley Snipes, but you can see a little bit of the tattoo right over there on the back of the head, and I'll get into that a little bit more later on, but I think these are great looking face sculpts. I love the fangs right over here. Eyes look pretty good and everything. Nice facial hair. Love the skin tone. All looks very realistic. I'm very pleased with that. Haircut in the back and everything. The fade looks really good. But I do prefer these two right here because this is going to be more like a comic book blade for me. I'm kind of leaning more to the comic book side of it. And I'm not the biggest fan of this one right over here. I don't know about the smirking blade. He looks a little cockeyed too, but I do like this one right here a lot. So out of the four head sculpts, I think this one's my favorite. And I love how the tattoo ink looks, man. It has that green tone to it as tattoos do. So that is pretty awesome. Very pleased with that. You can go ahead and attach sunglasses. So, of course, with the bald ones, I like adding the red sunglasses. I just tend to do that, and I think that looks really cool. Very pleased with that. And you can shift that up a little bit if you want. So that is nifty. It rests on the ears pretty well. And then on the more Wesley Snipes looking ones, I like to use the black sunglasses. It just reminds me of the movie a little bit more so. And get that on there, and that looks pretty good too, man. So I'm very pleased with that. That is pretty sick. And then when porting these onto the figure, you can see that on the back of the neck, ooh, knocked over a sword, that the head tattoo lines up perfectly with the neck tattoo. That's just for these more Wesley Snipes looking head sculpts right here. Uh, for the bald headed, more comic looking version, uh, you can see that it's just kind of showing up on the neck right there. And yeah, these side tattoos on the side of the head don't really go anywhere, but still, I think that's pretty cool. And here's looking at the rest of the body and I think it looks fantastic. I love this red lining throughout. What an awesome design. I think it's absolutely stunning. And we get some nice elastic material right over here. This kind of feels like vinyl. I really dig it quite a bit. Again, the tattoos on this figure just look amazing. Very realistic. Again, with the nice looking flesh tone, the gloves look awesome with that gunmetal gray. I didn't talk about that earlier, but I really dig it. Here's looking at the back of the figure. Looks awesome. Very pleased with this look. This is a really cool looking figure. Uh, one thing I am going to gripe about though, I do feel like it's kind of skinny. I don't know, it kind of tapers in a lot at the waist, a little bit more than I'd like. So it's a little on the thin side, but it still looks pretty good, man. I really like that belt right there. Looks incredible with all the pouches and everything. Really digging the silver paint apps, and I like the material that they used for the pants, the holsters and everything, the straps. I mean, this is nice, durable material. I haven't had any problems. I've posed this thing around a plenty and yeah, no real wrinkles or anything like that going on. It's kind of weird to experience that, especially as a Hot Toys collector. It's like, how are they able to do this? And Hot Toys is not. But looking at the boots right here, that looks incredible. Really digging that a lot. Love that gunmetal. The shoes look really good over here too. Nice treads and we get holes at the bottom of the feet. And here's looking at the back of the boots. You can see those little dots right there painted silver. All those buttons and everything. And then there's your blade butt and blade back again. Now we get some great articulation on this figure. You can move his head up very far and you can move it all the way down. You get side to side motion and great head pivoting. It's the same articulation with all four head sculpts. The shoulders move up very far. That is great. And you can move them down just that much. They will rotate forward and you can rotate them back. I get a little bit of a butterfly joint shifting forward and back right over there, which is pretty sweet. You get a bicep swivel in there, double jointed elbows bend in that far, and then you can turn the wrist side to side and it hinges up and down or it could hinge horizontally depending on how you have that configured. You get a diaphragm joint that turns a little bit right in there as you can see. And it won't really crunch forward that much, but it crunches back a little bit more so. Uh, you also get some pivoting right there at the diaphragm. You get a waist joint right here and it'll pivot a bit at the waist and it doesn't really crunch for, oh, you can see it crunching forward with both joints that far and with both joints it'll move back that much. Hips move outward that far and he'll kick forward this much and back, upper thigh cut, double jointed knees. You can rotate the boots side to side. You can move the ankles down. You can move them up just a little bit and you can move the foot side to side and we also get improved ankle pivot. Usually ankle pivot's a little bit more limited 
limited than that on the Mezcos. So I think this is an improvement. I like this. Now to measure out this blade figure, you can see that he's standing at about the six and three quarter inch mark. And then for your six inch scale blade comparison, we have the Mezco 112 collective figure next to the Marvel Legends comic version of Blade. And then we have the Marvel Legends Toy Biz Series 5 movie version of Blade. And man, that movie holds a special place in my heart. Before Spider-Man, before the MCU, before the X-Men, we had Blade. And I remember seeing that out in the theaters. I actually saw all three Blade movies out in the theaters. I was just really pumped about that. And I think both one and two are awesome. Uh, part three, much to be desired. But anyway, uh, one nifty thing is that I can take the sunglasses off of this one because I had this held with the rubber band for a long time. The rubber band finally snapped on me. And I just wanted to see if I could fit one of the Mezco sunglasses on here. And it does work out perfectly man that is so cool so i'm gonna have the figure with those sunglasses on there now i'm very happy about that now i was gonna try to get this trench coat onto this figure right here but it is falling apart on me and i'm getting flaking all over the place plus this figure is a bit smaller than this one right here so i don't think it's going to fit but the retail version of blade will have a trench coat with red lining on the inside and i think that looks really cool and then for a Mezco 112 Collective New York Toy Fair 2019 exclusive figure comparison, we have Blade next to Agent Gomez. And let me know if you want to see me review the Agent Gomez over here. It's a pretty sweet figure too. Then here's Blade next to a couple other 112 Collective Mezco Toys figures. We have Doctor Strange, and then we have the SDCC 2019 Special Ops Punisher. Thanks again, Talker Art. Why are you skipping the articulation segments, brother? You're making me sad. But I really like how this resembles a comic version of Blade. That's what I'm going for my Mezco figures, a little bit more towards the comic book look. Then here's our 112 collective blade figure next to your average six inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends big time classic Spider-Man. Oh man, sweet looking shades. Think I could borrow more? Oh, okay, okay, okay. They're just sunglasses, dude. Jeez. So I've had a great time with this figure. The exclusives that we get over at New York Toy Fair are always a big highlight and I love this piece, man. I had a lot of fun posing it around at the hotel room and taking pictures of it over here in my little studio. It's just been a fantastic time. I do have little gripes about it. I mentioned those earlier, but they are very minor compared to how much I really, really like this figure. So I'm very pleased with it. I have to give it a sun rating of, I love it. Really the biggest downside to this figure is that it was a Toy Fair exclusive, but there is going to be a retail version with that red lining trench coat, which I think looks very cool. So there's reasons to get one or the other, but yeah, uh, this was free for me, but it's gonna be expensive for people picking it up on eBay. I recommend waiting for the retail version. That one looks really cool to me as well, but out of the two, I do prefer this one right over here. Anyway. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. If you have not already, you can check out MarvelousNews.com. If you want to see the latest in Marvel news photos and forums, make sure you follow me on Stardust, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. Links to everything in the description below. And I'll catch you guys later. Mayfix Spidey tomorrow. Peace! And, uh, action figures. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures every day. Hey, new Sharp Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.